Hey, today I'm going to go in depth and talk about vermiculture for the garden or the farm. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I want to share with you guys my vermiculture activity that I've started in the greenhouse. What is vermiculture? It's uh, raising worms. Uh, for this uh, purpose, we're going to be going through. I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, containers you can use to grow worms in and the benefits of worms what to feed worms how easy it is to acquire the worms so let's get started to begin with uh, start with a container any container will do well, not just any container you can use a bin uh, put a hole in the bottom put it at an angle and uh, put a container at one end so as it leaches you're going to catch those drippings from whatever process is through the uh, the tub of worms and compost that they're creating I'll explain that in the future uh, coming up here shortly also you could use a couple of five gallon buckets you take one five gallon bucket uh, you set it on the ground and you take a secondary five gallon bucket and you set it on top of that you want to drill a couple of holes inside. Again, you want whatever fluid is going to gather in the bottom and leach through the bottom, you want to collect that into your bottom tub, uh, your bu bucket, but you want to save that fluid and just keep a lid over it and keep it in a nice um, warm place. Not too warm. You don't want the worms to get over 100 degrees and cook to death. You want to keep it at a moderate temperature. Uh, some people keep it under the kitchen sink, which is a good place to do it, and other people keep them in the utility room. Others just keep them in the backyard in a nice sheltered place and protected during the winter months from freezing because you don't want your rooms to freeze either. My worm bin here is a recycled, repurposed bathtub. This was left behind uh, when I purchased the property the property came complete with a destroyed single wide mobile home and this tub had been ripped from the mobile home from the previous occupants they were squatters destroyed everything but it was to my advantage I was able to clean everything up and buy the property at a discount it ended up at the auction and I yeah I got it at a discount that's another show I'll leave a link up there so you guys can click on that and see how a poor man bought cheap property. Poor, but very creative and ability to think outside the box. Going back to the worms, I decided to upgrade this uh, bathtub and use it for my worm bin or for my vermiculture. So I uh, created this stand for it uh, to uh, create storage underneath and also get it up off the ground so I can have a bucket down below to be able to create, uh, create a vessel in which the drippings or that leech stuff can uh, drip off and collect into that bucket. Now that bucket is going to be valuable coming up here pretty soon and I will share that with you guys in a moment. So I created this utilitarian stand. I've got it at a nice height right here for me to be able to use also as a work surface in the greenhouse. I resource this screen right here uh, to be able to place over the top of it so whatever I'm working with on uh, here like dirt and other stuff will fall through and then go back down into the worms uh, bin for the worms to be able to uh, utilize and process. It took me about eight years to finally get into uh, get this thing complete and get the worms in here. So what I did is uh, I went down and resourced some worms from my local garden center. You can just get red wrigglers. It comes with a, a little uh, large cottage cheese uh, size container. Uh, there's about 400 worms plus in there and you can also get them at a bait shop. There's people who raise red wrigglers and they can, uh, they're can they making an income from raising worms which I can make an income from raising worms also. 
So that's a potential for additional revenue for my homestead while I'm facing going into retirement. Yeah, we're gonna need a little bit of extra income as we go through that. Anyway, I uh, the, the stuff that I add to the worms is simply uh, a little bit of soil, and then you can add paper, eggshells, coffee grounds, food scraps, uh, also like uh, banana peels. Don't, it's not recommended that you add acidic foods like citrus or um, like uh, onions. Uh, that's bad for the worms, so don't add that to the worms. So in this little bucket, what I have here is I have drier lint. Yep, they eat drier lint. I have paper napkin, yep, paper, they eat paper. Uh, that's carbon to add to the soil, which the plants take up because they need the carbon. And then the scrap food, these are banana peels. And then I have coffee grounds. And then also eggshells. I also have some organic material here to spread over the top. And then I've got some chicken manure and rabbit manure. They're gonna love this stuff. And I place that not only in my garden beds, but I save a bucket full for in here because it's gonna feed the worms and it's also gonna add that extra nutrient to the compost in which the worms are gonna create for me. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of excellent nutrients that the worms do make for our benefit, for the benefit of the garden. Now this stuff, this matter, this rich organic matter that the worms are creating is called worm casting. They go through, they eat it up, and then they poop it out. One thing you want to do to add to your uh, your compost here is add a little bit of sand because the worm has like a, a gut that need, it, they take up sand in the natural environment and they use that sand just like chickens do when they pick up pebbles and they use those pebbles in their crop to be able to grind down the more hard solid foods to be able to make it digestible. And the same way it goes with worms. They need to digest that food and break it down so they take up those sand granules and it helps them uh, in the digestion process. I do add a little bit more organic material and, uh, and um, soil and paper. You wanna keep it not too wet you don't want to saturate it. You just want to keep it nice and consistent, kind of like this. And uh, so it doesn't really drip through. Now, as the worms are processing all this organic material, they're breaking it down, everything here. It's uh, composting and as, a, as, a, as the layer drops, because they're composting, it's compacting. Uh, we just keep adding more and more organic material on top of it. Once this side is full, you'll notice that my tub has two separate uh, chambers. I have it separated by this screen and there's a reason for that. That screen is a divide. I fill half of it. Once they've got this all full and it's all processed, then I'll go ahead and start adding material to the other side. Now the worms are gonna naturally gravitate to where there's food. So all this organic material that I'm now starting to add to this other half, the empty half, they're gonna naturally migrate from the processed side to the unprocessed side and start working that through also and creating additional worm casting. Now, the side that has been processed is done. Should be pretty much free of worms. You're gonna get a few worms here and there but not as many because they're all next door at another chamber. So this makes it easier for harvesting the worm castings. Here's another point of revenue. You can sell the worm castings or you can use it to augment in your own garden and orchard to make sure your plants thrive like crazy. And I mean plants love this stuff because they've broken down all the um, the bulk material and made trace elements that the plant root can easily take up those elements into the plant itself and readjust the carbon in it, uh, the molecules and the atoms and then they can make it into food for you and me. So now talking about the stuff that the leachate that goes to the bottom and drains out through the drain, it collects in this bucket that I have down here. Well, that is called worm tea. Very highly nutritious and a little bit goes a long way. 
I'm going to collect the warm tea and uh, bottle it in these one gallon bottles that I'm collecting. And they're one gallon carboys. I'm going to uh, be able to sell that in uh, a smaller quantities, but I'll collect it in bulk here and then dispense it otherwise so I can gain some additional revenue from that. So now we got revenue from raising rooms, we've got revenue from the worm uh, uh, castings. Now we can get additional revenue from also the leachate, which is called worm tea. It's called liquid gold. Uh, worm castings, it's called black gold. Uh, that's what the gardeners refer it to. But the worm tea, when you use it, you have to dilute it. The proportion is 10 to 1. Say 10 cups of water to 1 cup of worm tea. Now that worm tea, you can put it in a, uh, a, a water bottle with an atomizer on it and you can diffuse it and atomize it towards the, on the leaves of your plants. So the leaves will take in the nutrients and also dribble a little bit on the soil. Man, your plants, you will be so happy with your plants when you do this. So I got three sources of income just from worms alone. Yeah, good income. So those are uh, an advantage, triple advantage, to having vermiculture on your farm or your homestead or even in your, for your own uh, urban garden, just a little bit of worms. Now the worms are gonna multiply, okay? And I can use the worms myself. I will take a handful of worms, uh, say about a dozen worms, and put them around all my guard raised beds. Mm -hmm. About a dozen worms per raised bed. They'll go through and they'll naturally aerate the soil for the plants, uh, the plant roots to get oxygen and also take up the nutrients of the compost that the worms are leaving behind and also tapping into that natural forming worm tea that's in the bottom of the garden, yeah. Also, when I begin to start planting my orchard, uh-huh, I've got it right outside the wall here. I'm going to go ahead and place a handful of worms in the root hole before I put the root ball down into the soil. And we're making it nice and comfortable for the worms and give them some organic material and also some organic material for the tree roots to tap in and give this thing a running start at producing. Uh, yeah, worms, great livestock to have on the homestead. I'm so happy I finally got them introduced to my homestead and now we can enjoy the fruits of our labors and the fruits of our crop. They also make great fish bait. Yes, right here in my greenhouse. Just go grab a handful of worms and go fishing and then I can catch fish and have a fish dinner thanks to my worms. So many things that you can do with worms. Not such a creepy little cr uh, critter after all, but be very incredibly beneficial. Who knew a worm could be that advantageous to having uh, in the garden, in the orchard, even in the greenhouse, and even for an extra income. That's something a kid could do as a start to an income. Uh, there is a story about one kid who does black gold and worm tea in his backyard in the urban area he makes a lot of money because the farmers and the gardeners come to him for that black gold oh yeah plants love it that's all i have to say about the subject of vermiculture at pine meadows hobby farm we're a frugal homestead tucked high in the cascade ranges of the pacific northwest we're geographically located west-southwest of Crater Lake National Park, tucked high in the Cascade Ranges. Please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing, then clicking that bell icon above. That gives you new uh, an advantage to seeing new videos as I produce them and upload them right away. Also, clicking that share button and sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps me out a lot. Please like the show by clicking that thumbs up button and it helps the algorithms with YouTube. And also, please always remember to be safe and always be kind. Yeah, we'll see you guys in another show. Take care, bye-bye.